Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Starburst Galaxy to create and then populate Apache Iceberg tables. I'm also going to take a quick look at some of the Iceberg metadata tables so that you can see what kind of information they provide. This video accompanies the Starburst tutorial of the same name, which you can read through if you prefer written instructions. If you plan on following along, please make sure you've completed the prerequisite tutorial titled Configure a Starburst Galaxy Data Lake Catalog and Schema. In that tutorial, you'll create a catalog that connects to an Amazon S3 bucket owned and maintained by Starburst, so that you don't have to worry about bringing your own data storage. OK, let's get started. I've logged into Starburst Galaxy, and the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm using a role that has the necessary privileges to create and modify tables. My current role is shown at the top right of my screen. I'm using the account admin role, which will work perfectly. If you need to switch roles, you can simply click on your current role and select another one from the list. Let's move on to creating an Apache Iceberg table. I can create tables using SQL Data Definition Language, or DDL, in the Query Editor. To get to the Query Editor, I'll hover over the left-hand nav bar to expand it, click Query, and then click Query Editor. So that I don't have to use the fully qualified catalog name in my SQL, I'm going to set the cluster catalog and schema for this session. And I can do that with the dropdowns here. You can see that I already have mine set, and I would suggest that you do the same. OK, now let's create our table. I've copied and pasted my SQL in the window ahead of time. Feel free to pause this video and review the SQL if you'd like. Notice that this table will have three columns and that I've identified the type as iceberg and the format or file type as parquet. So I'm going to just highlight the SQL here and click the Run Selected button. Now, my SQL did not take very long to run, but if you have not started up your cluster, then yours is going to take a little longer. OK, now that I've created a table, I'm going to add some records to it. Again, I've copied and pasted the SQL in here. This SQL will add three records to the table. You may recognize them as characters from Dune. So again, I'm going to select and then click Run Selected. OK, it finished. And I want to verify that my records were added. And I can do that by running a simple select star from query. So I'm going to run this one right here. OK, looks good. Now that I've created and populated my table, I can take a look at some of the metadata tables. If you want to learn about Iceberg metadata, I would suggest reading through the tutorial that accompanies this video. There's a link to the Iceberg specification there as well that provides a detailed explanation of how Iceberg uses metadata. For the purposes of this video, it's important to understand that with Iceberg, snapshots or versions of a table are created anytime the structure or data changes. Knowing this, I can conclude that my table has two snapshots, one from when the table itself was created, and the second from when I added records to the table. I can actually query the metadata tables to see this for myself. I'll start with the history metadata table, which provides a log of the metadata changes performed on the iceberg table. So I'm going to run this query right here. So the first snapshot ID in this list refers to the snapshot that was created when the table was created. The next one is from the insert statement execution. And notice that its parent ID value is the same as the snapshot ID from the row before it. Next, I'm going to look at the files metadata table. This one will give me a detailed view of the data files in the current snapshot. So here's my query right here. Let's run that. Now let's look at each column from the query results. The file path is a specific file name. The remainder of the columns relate to this particular file. The record count is the number of records in the file. Ours has three. The value counts are the number of values in each column. Each of our columns has three values. The null value counts is the number of null values in each column, and our count is zero for each column. The lower bounds shows the lowest value in each column. For example, our ID field has 101 as a lower bound. And then the upper bounds is the highest value in each column, and our ID field has 103 as an upper bound. I'm going to go ahead and add five more records to the table so that I can see how the files and history metadata tables are updated accordingly. So here's my SQL to add the records. Notice that I'm purposely adding a null value in there. So let's run that. And it finished, and I'm just going to go ahead and run my select star from again, just to make sure that the records were added. And they were. It looks good. Let's now query the files metadata table again. And I can just go down here and run the same query again. And the previous record is still in there, so I can just compare the two here. So notice that my record count is now 5. Uh, the value counts have changed as well, so there are now 5 values in each column. 
Um, notice that I now do have one null value in the third column, and then the lower bounds have changed and so have the upper bounds. The final thing I'm going to do is create the history metadata table again so that I can make sure that a new snapshot was created when I added the five new records. So let's go ahead and run this query again. And there it is, you can see your new snapshot that was created. That's all for this video. I would encourage you to review the accompanying tutorial for more information and also to complete the steps on your own. Thanks for watching.